Uh, Does anybody else have another question? Yes, you're right. I want to know what are some things that we can do once it starts to get a little bit colder that we can do to continue this fight and us, us to use ourselves to speak and stuff like that um, besides just marching and stuff. Like, what are things that we can do, like you said, city council, that are easily accessible for young people to do? Yes. So, it's on, it's on. This one? Yeah. Okay. So I will say that I believe that marching is still important, even when it's cold, because in November 2015, we was out there for 18 days, and blizzards, nothing stopped us. They thought when it got, they forced us, good bulldozers, in the middle of the night, that's the only way we left the fourth precinct, right? So we do still need to march, because marching helps apply pressure to the system. When they think everybody is tired, everybody's cold, they think that it'll die down, but people need to see a visible representation of the people, like out there resistant with overcoats on, standing up and fighting and marching. But in, even while we're out here right now still marching, we are still working on policy things, right? Yeah. We're still going to the legislature and testifying. Right. Yeah. We're on one-on-one -on -one calls with people. We're on Zoom calls with people. We're picking up the phone. Like uh, Communities United Against Police Brutality, you guys came up with 44 policy recommendations that's on their website for how to shift what is happening in our system of policing. Right? I am definitely not running again. I do that one. For real, y'all. Y'all don't know what I went through. Trying to deal with white liberals, haters. It's a lot. But that's why I ran to prevent someone like George Floyd from being killed. That's right. Right? But just because I'm not running doesn't mean you guys can't run. You have to be preparing your campaigns now. That's something that people can start doing in the winter time. Beginning to pre prepare your campaigns because it take, takes almost a full year, right, right to raise money, get um, get some name recognition out there so people put their signs in your yard, their yard, all kinds of things. So now is the time to start that. But we have to be multitaskers. We've never just marched and not dealt with policy, not gone and gone off on the governor, not gone and called up legislators, not gone to city hall and demanded change with city council. So it's all multiple prong. Everybody just figures out where do I fit in, and then you get in where you fit in, and you keep going. Yeah, let me just say also, you know, we're pretty creative here um, in the time of COVID and all that. It's a hell of a lot harder to organize, and it's amazing how people have been organizing. Uh, we learned how to do Zoom and all kinds of other things yeah. I never thought I'd do. But, you know, we're being creative here tonight because it used to be we could come to the city council, we could come to the meetings, we could testify at their public hearings, we could hold signs, we could boo, and we could cheer. And we can't do that now. We can just show up one at a time on the phone and get no feedback from anything. It's rough. It's real rough. There's a lot of things that are much harder to organize now. But here we are in front of Lisa Bender's house. That's right. anymore. You can see her in a Zoom meeting on city council and that's it. So Was she much for talking to the people when before COVID? Well no, not actually. About bike lanes. <laughs> yeah. About bike lanes, yes. But, yeah. but you know but she had to show up at the city council chambers. You know, and she had to be in her office. But how did the they time. show up at Powderhorn Park if they worried about COVID? Right. Yeah. I said, how did they show up in person at Powderhorn Park if they're so worried about COVID? Yeah. It was about pandering to a certain crowd, not about the people represented here in Minneapolis. We got it. Exactly. And when I looked at, if you were at Powderhorn watching that, it was almost entirely white people. It was almost entirely white people, so it's very interesting to see seas of, of white people saying, yeah, defund the police, and, and you have no black people uh, involved in the conversation. And so it, it, was, it was very strange, and Alondra Canola was saying unicorns that. and rainbows, yeah. and, and I, I didn't know what she was saying at all. And that's literally what she said. I'm not making that up. No, it's the truth. She literally said that.